Oh yeah, Marathon Day. This is the day we all wait for. After months and months of training, we can finally go out and show the world that we've trained the right way. Go out, execute a race, get beer, show off your medal to your friends. I mean, it's that easy, right? Well, in my case, it wasn't quite that simple. Enjoy it. You see that yellow dot there? Yep, that's me. So I'm a runner. I love to run, it's kind of what I do. This year I was picked up to be a part of the Air Force Marathon team, and I got my first DNF. So there's something with this marathon that I don't know, it just doesn't work out for me. But here's the crazy thing about that. You see this guy right here? Yep, that's also me. I am in the Air Force. So how does an airman not complete the Air Force Marathon? If you really take a look at my marathon times, there's nothing too great there. Yeah, I almost had a couple sub four marathons. I also had an eight hour marathon with the wife. I guess to really understand what happened with this, I have to take you to the beginning. So in May, I was officially notified that I was selected for the Pacific Air Force's marathon team for the Air Force Marathon, and I was pretty stoked. Of course, you know, the first thing I did was hit the track to really kind of see where I was and kind of gauge myself. I figured it'd be a walk in the park. I completed marathons before. Even if I don't get the time I want, I knew I'd still finish. And in the end, I'd get my medal. I'd try to help the team out as best as I can we'd all go home and have a good time. Here's the kicker. I was part of the half marathon team. 13.1 miles pulled me my max. I was never really signed up for the full marathon. So I trained for a half marathon. My trainer hooked me up with a great training plan and I went out and hit the streets every single day making moves. It was great. My full marathon times have always been pretty average. However, my half marathon times were slowly getting better each year. So I was pretty excited to be running on the half marathon team. I figured by the time the race rolls around, I should be ready, and I could have dropped at least four to five minutes off my time. I knew realistically that if I wanted to even keep up with these guys, I would have to train. And I knew that even with training, I still wouldn't be able to keep up with some of these people. But I did my best to do what I could to keep training and to keep focused, and hopefully, when it came to Marathon Day, I'd be ready. I kept thinking about that Forrest Gump scene where he just decided to get up one day and go for a run. There was no particular reason, but he just decided it was time for him to go. And that scene just kept running in my mind over and over again as I kept training. You know, I was a runner, and I was going to run, and I was going to do good. You've got mail. And then it happened. I got an email from the team asking if I would replace myself for the full marathon team. Ah! Apparently one of the people on the team got hurt, and they were unable to run the full distance. However, they were able to run the half distance. I figured why not, I'll take one for the team. I'd run multiple full marathons before, and even though I would probably be a little bit jet lagged and I wasn't unfamiliar with the course, I knew for a fact that I'd be able to run a full marathon. I mean, this should be easy. To be truthful, I actually like the full distance a lot better. Sometimes when you get selected for something, you kind of pump yourself up a way more than what it's supposed to be. You start thinking you're a lot faster than what you're supposed to be and start then you're in that elite status. That was not the case with me. Once I got here, I started listening to the half marathon team talking about their 116 times and the full marathon team talking about their 219 times. That's when I knew I was in trouble. The fastest I have ever run was a four hour marathon, but for some reason today, we were shooting for a 345. You've seen the videos. Where the guy runs always to the finish line and that kind of passes out and he has to crawl to make his way to the finish. Well, I kind of figured that'd be me. I could do whatever I did to just get myself to that point and at the finish I'd just power through a little bit, cross the finish line, have a beer and we'd be all good. So my first indication that this was not going to happen that way is when I started running. I was going for a 345 time, however the 345 pace team was behind me. So that means I started out way too fast. I didn't even see the 3 hour pace team until about maybe... 20 to 30 minutes into the race. After that, when I hit the halfway point, I was at a 152 marathon pace, which is good. However, it was hot, it was humid, and I wasn't even drinking what I was supposed to be drinking. I was drinking Gatorade, which I forgot I'm almost allergic to. I cannot drink Gatorade because it absolutely destroys my stomach. 
I would find out about that around mile 17 though. I would slowly go to this guy who was pretty confident at the beginning of the race. To this guy who was slowly dying at the end. This is mile 16 before I got taken off on a stretcher. So in the end, what does it all mean? It just means don't be overly confident, stick to your training, and learn from your experience. The best thing I've learned from this is how not to give up and to keep pushing forward. A week after my Air Force Marathon DNF, I went ahead and recorded my second fastest half marathon time. Two weeks after that, I went ahead and ran another full marathon. This time, I actually passed that. So don't ever give up, just keep pushing forward. In the end, you have to learn from every experience, whether it be good or bad. You can never appreciate the good times if you never experience those bad ones. That's what I learned from my experience, and I hope it helps somebody else as well.